How are we doing guys? Welcome to the Friday Waffle. Um, trust you've all had a good week. As usual, I've had a really busy week. Um, yeah, last week, uh, last weekend, I was uh, down in London for a, a friend's wedding. Um, the flight back wasn't until uh, 10, 10 o'clock at night from Gatwick on Sunday. So I uh, didn't get back to Edinburgh until what time? Um, about half past 11. By the time I got home um, and into my bed, it was about 1 o'clock in the morning um, when my mates kindly picked me up because uh, my wife Tracy, she was actually way down to Carlisle. So yeah, I didn't get home until about 1 o'clock in the morning and then I was actually back up four hours later to fly to a place called Campbelltown. Now, unless you're Scottish, you've probably never even heard of Campbelltown. Uh, it's a little village, it's away on the west coast. It's, it's, I mean, from Livingston, where I stay, it's probably about 160 miles, but the problem is it's all tiny, tiny little roads, B roads, basically. Uh, and to drive from Livingston to Campbelltown takes about five hours, which just isn't isn't going to happen because I've got a full day's work to do. So that would be like ten hours driving. Um, so nah, so I flew, so I was bloody knackered. But uh, yeah, this weekend uh, I've really got nothing on, which I'm delighted about. I'm intending to get out my bike. I got a new fancy dancy bike through the cycle to work scheme. Um, got it two weeks ago, and I haven't even I've not been out in it once. So I'm planning to go on it tomorrow. Um, it's one of these bikes, it's a road bike, it's one of the Boardman bikes. It's got the proper, uh, what do you call it, shoes which can click into place and apparently it's quite easy to fall off your bike because if you stop suddenly, your feet are locked into place so you have to uh, practice it. So yeah, I'm planning to do that tomorrow. Um, what else, what else, what else? Um, yeah, that's it. So, uh, yep. What have I been, apart from that, yeah, I was through at a mate's house, um, my mate Tony, now he is a bit of a whiz kid when it comes to electronics, computers, etc. Um, now I've got a, an original Xbox down there, it had, a, I think it was a 120 gig hard drive in it. Now uh, one of my mates put a rather large hard drive in his um, and that got me thinking, so I spoke to Tony, I said, like, what's the chance that you... Uh, could you fit a new hard disk for me, put a new hard disk in it? So Tony says, yeah, no problem. So he very kindly installed a 500 gig drive in it, um, which is excellent. I mean, I've got I've got all the emulators, all your coin-up fives and all these kind of things, all the emulators you could possibly want, which takes up about 160 gig, I think it is. Um, so I've got about 380 odd gig spare. So I'm currently uploading games as we speak. So, yep, um, that's that's all I have been up to really this week. There was something else I was going to mention, but I can't for the life of me think what it was. Um, no, it doesn't matter. Must have been must have been a lie. So anyway, yeah, a couple of topics or three topics uh, to be exact, which I want to talk about. First one is when is there a need to have a backup of hardware? Now. I have got, I think at the last count, I have got something like 50, about 55 different systems, um, be it handhelds, computers, consoles, etc. Now that doesn't count the doubles that I have. Um, you know, and it's kind of got me thinking, I mean, I, when I first started buying doubles, I mean, I've got, I've got, I've got my sort of favourite machines. I've got my Commodore 64, my Spectrum, Atari. Um, my Vectrex, you know, I have uh, got doubles of a lot of these, and it's kind of got me thinking: is there a really, is there any real reason to have um, duplicates of these machines? You know, I did. <laughs> I bought them thinking, well, if one breaks, I can, you know, I've got another one here as a sort of standby. But then, you know, a lot of these machines they're readily available. Um, and I don't think there's any real requirement for having two of everything. I mean, I'm trying to think, I've got two Amigas, I've got two 1200s, I've got, I've only got one BBC, I must admit. Um, I've got about, I think I've got about four Commodore 64s, multiple Spectrums, um, God knows how many Ataris. Um, but yeah, and I've got two Vectrexes. I've got to say, out of all the, the hardware that I do have, doubles off, um, the Vectrex is one that I probably... Um, I don't regret having a spare one because uh, 
these things can just uh, well, it's like any hardware that that is, you know is that kind of old. It can easily fail, um, and the Vectrex is definitely becoming harder to get a hold of. But you know, Spectrums, Commodore sixty fours, Amigas. There's still a lot of them out there, although they're not made anymore. There's a lot of machines on eBay. Um, so if one was to fall over, I mean, it's the same with Mega Drives. I think I've got about four Mega Drives. Um, it's just utterly pointless, I think. So yeah, is there a requirement to keep sort of, you know, spare hardware? I don't think so. Um, yeah, don't know. Anyway, that's that one. Now, um, one thing that I've uh, that I always it doesn't amaze me, but one thing that I'm always uh, intrigued to look at when I look at some of the the more sort of most successful, and now that's maybe the wrong phrase to use. Is success the number of views? I don't know, but bigger channels. When I look at some of the bigger channels, that I've got a lot more subscribers than myself. Um, some of them, it's surprisingly how few videos they actually put out. Um, then conversely, there's channels who put out videos all the time. I mean, what is, if somebody was to say to me, you know, somebody was starting up for the first time, starting up a YouTube channel, if they said to me, how many videos should I put out a week? Um, I mean, when I started, um, when I started this channel, I used to put out a video every day. Um, and, nah, I mean, I would, nah, I don't, I definitely don't make videos every day. I'm a great believer in thinking that, you know, there is such a thing as, uh, quality over quantity um, and the thing is as well if you're making videos every single day then it does it becomes a bit of a chore you know um, and if it becomes a chore then that will become you know your, your viewer will detect that when you're talking um, and I've certainly been there in the past I said I used to make videos I used to make a 10 minute mashup every single day and it did get to the point where I couldn't be arsed but I thought well I'll have to do it but uh, yeah I think as soon as you stop enjoying making videos, then that's probably the time, you know, people will detect that and that's probably the time to give up YouTube. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, I've I've been going, what, two years and I've made a, a lot more videos than a lot of the bigger um, channels, which goes to prove you don't have to make a lot of videos. I mean, it, it's on the flip side of the coin, if you don't, if you're only putting out maybe one video a week, then I think there's a danger of uh, people, you know, going to look at your channel and realising that, you know, the last video we put out was three days ago, four days ago, five days ago. People are eventually going to unsubscribe. I mean, I've actually unsub unsubscribed to a few channels recently uh, and I've been very close to unsubscribing to a couple more of the retro channels um, that I follow just because some of the guys weren't putting out any content. Um, you know, and I'm talking about I hadn't put out any content for quite a while so if you're not putting out any content then people are just going to switch off but yeah, what is the what is the optimum number of uh, videos to make? I don't know, possibly I'm the wrong type of person to answer that maybe it should be anybody that's watching this what is the optimum? Uh, I personally can try and go for one video every couple of, every couple of days um, there are times where, you know, commitments, real life, work, etc, etc, um, take over and it's maybe three or four days. Um, but what's interesting is <laughs> you can not make a video for maybe three or four days and you'll still get people subscribing. So, you know, as long as long as long as you've got an active channel and people can actually see that you're making videos, then I don't think it's an issue. But I don't think there's, I don't think there's an optimum number. Um, any less than one a week, mm, I, I would probably say that's not the way to go. Um, but then conversely, you don't want to be putting out one a day like I was doing. I mean, I do see some channels, they maybe only put out one video. You know, you look, you go to their channel and it's the last video was uploaded three weeks ago. So right away, you, you start to think, is there a lot of point in following this person because they don't make many videos? Um, I don't know, but then there's some guys um, like Paul Jenkinson who does the uh, the Spectrum show. His videos are just they're like I don't know how long it takes to make one. Um, you know they're they're really really high quality. Um, 
they're, they're almost, I would say they're almost as good. You could probably put it on, out on the TV. It's so well made. Um, and Paul, I think he puts out maybe one a month, but it must take him weeks and weeks and weeks to actually put one of these together sort of thing. So, yeah, what is the optimal number of videos? Okay, I'll, I'll, in fact, I'll, I'll turn this around. As a somebody who watches my videos, what would you say is your preferred number that uh, I make? You know, do you want to see a video every day? It's not going to happen, but uh, I'm just intrigued to know what you would class as the definitive number of videos per week. Um, I says I'm going to stick with sort of one every couple of days. Um, the only video that I'll ever try and put out once a week on a Friday is the Friday Waffle. Everything else can just wait. Um, so yeah, pause a wee second. Right, okay. Um, third thing I was going to give her about. Yeah, I mentioned uh, my mate Tony um, very kindly put in this uh, hard disk. Now, I said it's a 500 gig hard disk. Now, unfortunately, well, in fact, I tell a lie, I was going to say, unfortunately, the Xbox only uses the uh, IDE drives, but apparently you can put a SATA drive in it, but you need uh, you need a SATA interface and all that kind of nonsense. But uh, anyway, so I thought to myself, I'll try and get a hold of a, I don't know, like a one terabyte IDE drive, and uh, bloody hell, it would have been easier, I don't know, finding something extremely rare because uh, it looks like I don't think they even made one terabyte IDE drives um, the largest one I could find and even then there was only a couple available was 500 gig um, I tend to forget or it's easy to forget that uh, SATA drives have been around for quite a long time so IDE drives I don't even know if they're actually made brand new anymore um, very doubtful so anyway, cut long story short, Tony's put this drive in, um, it took him a lot of faffing about um, like the Xbox locks drives and he had to transfer all the emulation, all the emulators off my uh, 120 or whatever it is, 160 gig drive onto his computer and then transfer it back onto the, the new drive. But he's done an absolutely cracking job and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a main master look at um, off it. I'm actually currently copying a disc of course as we speak. So yeah, absolutely delighted. Now the only slight uh, bleh, was, uh, um, I mean, I must have, I don't know, I must have 300 uh, games for the original Xbox. Um, you know, the lion's share of these are copies, I don't mind admitting that. Um, I mean, I've got modded Xbox. I mean, I have got probably about 100 originals. But one thing that's really apparent as I've been going through all the games is really the lack of quantity, the lack of games that I really really want to play um, in fact even the lack of games that I've heard of you know other than the, I mean I'm trying to think of the games that I've put on it I've put in all these compilation stuff like Capcom Classics and you know if I was to say to you name the most famous Xbox or in fact name 10 Xbox games you would say Halo, obviously, Halo 2, um, you know, try and name a, an Xbox specific game apart from Halo and you'd be struggling um, and it's just got me thinking, is the Xbox going to be, what did I actually say in my question, is the Xbox, Xbox going to be the machine that time forgets? There's just really Apart from Halo, there's a complete lack of exclusive games. Um, I mean, the PlayStation 2, you had your Ico, your Gradius 5. There's loads and loads of games um, that were in the PlayStation 2. The PlayStation 1, you've got your Ridge Racers, you know, Sega Saturn, the Dreamcast. But the Microsoft the Xbox, um, you know, I would say 90% 90, 90 of the games that I've got there, I wouldn't even be able to tell you what they were. Um, that's not the case for the PS2 you know most of the games that I've got just if somebody said to me whatever it is I'd be able to tell you oh, it's such and such a game but you know there's so many games there that I just simply don't know what they are um, which is a shame because the Xbox it's a great machine I mean it's basically it's a, a I think it's like a 700 megahertz PC 
it's not a particularly quick machine, but because it was all sort of like, uh, you know, I don't know, tailored hardware, it plays games really well. It was basically, I mean, it was a better machine than the PS2, but I've got to say the PS2 definitely had the games. Um, I mean, PC Baker, he put out a video yesterday, I think it was, playing, uh, it was a, I was going to say the new, it wasn't new, it was a, an R-type game and he was comparing it with Gradius 5 and every time I see Gradius 5 it just knocks me for 6 it's such a stunning looking game I mean it, it does, it looks HD I sometimes wonder is there, is there special modes that these companies are able to unlock for certain games you know, obviously not but when you see Gradius 5 you would honestly think it was running on a, I don't know a, a, a PS3 at the very very least um, even a PS4. I mean, it would. It's that good. It's that good looking that it wouldn't look out of place at all on a PS4. But yeah, the Xbox. It's a shame. There's just really other than a couple of games. And I mean, the thing is, I'm not even a big fan of Halo. Um, there's just a, a complete lack of good games. I mean, there was like things like Black. Yeah, there was a, a handful of them, but you know, there's just. Most of the other games, I couldn't even tell you what they were, uh, and that's a shame because it's, a, it's an absolutely fantastic system. But uh, yeah, do you think the Xbox is it going to be the forgotten console? You know, people will always be able to say, I don't know, Shemu came out in the Dreamcast, Ridge Racer was the PlayStation, Knights um, was the Saturn, Sega Saturn. You know, all these machines, they've all got their standout machines, uh, standout games. Um, Halo for Xbox, but apart from Halo, you name another game, name other games that, you, that spring to mind as being Xbox exclusives. I mean, don't get me wrong, there was a lot of games that were ported to the, obviously, it's just, you know, it was ported to the PS2 and the Xbox, just the same way as stuff's ported to the uh, the PS4 now and uh, Xbox, Xbox One. So yeah, I don't suppose anything's really changed, but uh, yeah, it's just, it just seems to be a system that I think it's not really popular with people. I'm sure in 10 years time people will probably be, they'll probably stop talking about the Xbox because there's just so little kind of exclusive games. Um, so yeah, let's pause it a wee second again guys. Right, that's that's my topics done. Um, they kind of went on a wee bit and they probably weren't the most interesting. So apologies about that right now. Um, Brian, now apologies to Brian C, he actually gave me these questions uh, a couple of weeks ago um, and I completely forgot all about them but uh, I've got them here, so Brian C is asking here uh, <coughs> excuse me, nice waffle but once again my questions have gone back to the future or forward to the past but no worries, I'll repost them here questions for the Friday waffle number one, what is your favourite arcade sound effect? I'm sure I've gone over that one before, so you're obviously not paying attention, Brian. Um, favourite sound effects? Now, you know what? I think the, fa the sound effects that I was doing before were computer um, home computers, I think it was. Arcade favourite sound effects? Uh, it's going to be a Williams game, I think. But is there a particular favourite? Mm, I'm thinking possibly the uh, the firing sound in Defender when you fire. Um, that's a really really good sound, really bassy and just excellent. Other arcade sound effects. Yeah, it's I can't. I'd be struggling to think of my favourite one, but. Another one that I love to bits, although it's digitised, so technically it's cheating, is the sound uh, of Elf eating the food. Not even Elf in Gauntlet. When somebody eats the food, it's like... <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, I love that sound. And probably even the firing sound in Galaxian as well. Love that. Um Now I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go with the the fight the, the sound when you fire in defender. That's uh, 
that's one of the most iconic. I mean, I've said before, you know, I've said it before that the sounds in the, all the Williams games was just absolutely top notch. It really was. So yeah, that would be a firing sound in Defender. Number two, favourite arcade music. Oh, blame me. Arcade music. It's mm, it's going to have to be out on. I think. Um, Was there music in Go uh, Ghosts and Goblins? I don't. I can't think if there was. Maybe at the start. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you know what? It's going to have to be. It's a magic magical sound shower. I think. Um, and out on. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's got to be that one. Number three. Meme cabs are all very well, but if you could have any arcade machine, what would it be? Well, the obvious answer, which you probably know, is uh, Robotron. Um, and I mentioned the other day there, when I was doing my uh, Arcade Perfect My Arse, I would love to own a Galaxian machine. Um, it's just a, it's an iconic machine. Um, it's a, it's kind of timeless, although Daniel did point out that it's technically it's not timeless, because when I get to 999,999,999, then the game will probably crash, but uh, I think I don't think there's a hope in here of me ever getting to that stage. Um, I mean, the obvious one as well, I'd love to own a Star Wars cab. It's such a gorgeous machine, you know, the sit-down cockpit with the proper control and that kind of stuff. Um, but, uh, mm, oh, is it going to be Robotron? Is it going to be Galaxian? I'm just trying to picture my mind. What one would I play the most? Uh, it would have to be... It would have to be Robotron. Yeah, it would have to be pipped narrowly. Um, and then second would definitely be Galaxian. Now, I've told this story before. And if I haven't, I'll tell it again anyway. Um, back in 19... When would it be? 19, 1986, 1987. Me and a couple of mates were driving to a place called Burnt Island. Um, which is on the sort of the coast in Fife, and uh, driving. I think I was driving my car at the time. It would be a Mark II Escort, and we drove past a Galaxian machine discarded at the side of the road, and I think we just kind of laughed as we drove past it. But you know, to to look at it now, you think you must have been crazy. Why didn't I go back and get it? Well, a, I didn't have any transport to get it, and b, um, back in nineteen eighty six. I wasn't remotely interested in playing Galaxian. Um, you know, I'd moved on. I had my Commodore 64, um, which had games that were better than Galaxian. At least I like, I'd like to have thought so back then, but, you know, we, with uh, hindsight, possibly not. But, yeah, I drove past a Galaxian. Whether I had the actual cab, whether I actually had the, the screen in it, I don't really know. Um, but, yeah, it'd just be discarded at the side of the road. I mean, what would be the chances of that happening nowadays. So if I could get my DeLorean and go back in time, I would probably hire a transit van. I would go back to that. I don't know whether the camera over, it actually overheats. I can't believe that a digital camera overheats, but it does. And it switches itself off as a safety measure. So anyway, um, yeah. So what was that again? That would be... Uh, yeah, it would have to be Robotron. Closely followed by Galaxian. Number four, have you ever designed the ultimate toaster in your head? Actually, now you mention it, um, no. The ultimate toaster... The ultimate toaster would be able to take uh, these big fat kind of girdle scone things. Um, being a, a kid of the sort of 70s, I was brought up, my mum and dad used to eat a lot of scones and crumpets and God, things that put you put butter in, you put them in the toaster or back then it was probably under the grill actually. Um, so I love these things, soda scones, things like that. Um, so yeah, I would the toaster would have to be able to take extra big massive girdle scones and it would also have to uh, burn toast per, uh, to perfection. The average toaster now You've got to put it down three or four times before it actually burns things. Um, apparently, 
you know, it's a carcinogenic, so you get cancer if you eat burnt toast. But, uh, tough, you know what I mean? I don't smoke, um, so I shall continue my advice of eating and burnt things. But yeah, the toaster would have to be able to take extra thick scones and God knows what else, and it would have to have a, a setting for a living where it actually burns things without having to repeatedly put the thing up and down. Um, and it would obviously take four four things at once as well. So yeah, that would be my ultimate toaster. Um, Brian's answers were, number one, the sound when you drop a coin into an out-run machine. Yeah, yeah, the wee de -de ding I think it is. Yep, I know what you're talking about. Number two, magical sound shower. I didn't even look at your answers, Brian, but yeah, I've got to agree with you on that one. Number three, out-run. Yeah, interesting. Cracking cab, but would I want to own one? Possibly, but not before these other ones. And number four, yes. Which was, do you want to, have you ever thought about designing the ultimate toaster? So, thanks for that, Brian. Always appreciate these things. Um, before I go on to the second batch of questions, um, I was watching, There's I've, I've covered this before, there was a series of programmes put out um, by the BBC back in the, the mid 80s there was a thing called the it was like the government computer program and that's where basically BB, uh, Acorn Soft the, the, the government uh, sorry I should I say the BBC put out a contract for a computer company to make a computer which could go to schools and uh, Sinclair obviously they tried to get the spectrum put in but Acorn won with the BBC and to a company that uh, that sort of program. There was a, a series of programs on the BBC. The first one was called the Computer Program, funnily enough, and then the sequel was called Micro Live. And uh, Micro Live, it was a very very dry sort of computer program. You know, there was a kind of boffin who would look at business software. Then there was a there was a guy called Fred Harris, <laughs> and uh, what's her name? The, the, oh bloody hell, I can't remember there was two people who used to be on uh, children's TV they were also in it as well and uh, yeah it's quite a dry programme I mean they never really featured games they would occasionally say that the computer would also play games but that was a, it was quite a dry programme but you know what back in whenever it would be 1980, 1983 I loved watching it you know this was this was the new thing, you know, computers before that, computers did not exist and watching these programmes and even, I mean I was watching one today because uh, on BBC iPlayer which uh, if you're not from the UK, BBC iPlayer is the BBC broadcasting company um, they have a, a web, sort of a, an online archive of programmes and what they've actually done is they've actually put up a couple of these old computer programmes from the sort of mid, uh, mid 80s so I was watching the micro live today and the intro is a an owl which uh, I think that was a kind of logo for Acornsoft I think um, but the owl comes sort of flying over but the music it was your typical kind of computerised music but oh man I mean they say that smells is the is the one sense that, that really in, takes you back to a time um, the second one is sound and I totally get that. When I hear the music to Micro Live with this owl kind of flying um, over the kind of rooftops, it's, it takes me right, right back. You know, I'm back to being what, 15 years old. Um, it's mental. It's just, it's an incredible sensation when you, when you, when you kind of revisit something like that from your youth. It just takes you right back. Um, yeah, anyway, listen, that was the only reason I was mentioning that because I was watching that today. But yeah, the very last uh, thing I'm going to talk about is uh, down the rabbit hole, Kevin. He has uh, He's always reliable with his questions, so I appreciate that as usual, Kev. For the Friday Waffle, Alan. Um, hi, last week, now I'm not even going to, well, I'll try to pronounce it. Shigeru Miyamoto, i.e. Mr. Mario Maker. Um, of Nintendo let it slip that they are working on a Pikmin 4 Hooray! This is big news because up until Splatoon came out Pikmin was the last original big console intellectual property that Nintendo created I know your daughter Ava is a big Splatoon fan 
and I think you are as well. And well, not really. I've never. I've only played it once, but uh, I can see what an amazing game it is, Kev. Um, one criticism gamers of a certain age have is that Nintendo just keeps shoving their old properties into rehash games. Prior to Splatoon's release, everyone was pointing to Pikmin as the final piece of originality Nintendo ever had. Do you think Nintendo need to work on making more IPs to keep things fresh? Um, this is a question that has been debated many times. Yeah, it's true. As soon as uh, and then as soon as Nintendo bring out a new piece, I'll be like, guys, camera overheated once more, so I've opened the window. Hopefully, cool it down. Um, yeah, what was I talking about? Um, yeah, Nintendo rehashing stuff. Yeah, it's a fact. Every new bit of Nintendo hardware that comes out, it's the same games over and over again. You've got Super Mario, you've got Mario Kart, you've got Donkey Kong, you've got Kirby, you've got Zelda, you've got Star Fox. Um, in fact, the latest game to come out, um, I mean, we've got Smash Brothers. The latest game to be coming out for the Wii, Nintendo Wii U, I should say, is uh, a Star Fox game. Now, as I've mentioned again um, recently, the Wii U is probably my favourite current gen console. Yeah, it might be the same games over and over again, but you know what? See when they're that bloody good, then you don't mind. I mean, it wouldn't matter what system you know I buy for Nintendo. When they bring out Mario Kart, I'll be the first to buy it. Um, Nintendo are just so good at making perfect games um, and I honestly believe that. I mean, there's some people they don't like Mario, they don't like Zelda, you know, they may not be Nintendo fans, which I totally get. Um, should Nintendo try and make new franchises? Yeah, possibly. I mean, Pikmin, you're, you mentioned there, Kev, that Pikmin is quite a... that was the last sort of uh, original um, gaming sort of uh, character. And I've got to say, Pikmin is actually one of my favourite games. It's brilliant. Um, Ava and I played through Pikmin 1 and 2 on the Wii, um, on the GameCube, I should say. Utterly fantastic. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, it, it would be great. In an ideal world, Nintendo would come out with all these games. But when you compare any Nintendo game with virtually any other game, it's just absolutely shined and buffed and polished to within an inch of its life it's perfect that's you know and I'm, I'm a bit of a Nintendo fanboy I must admit although saying that I'm not a fan of like, things like Zelda but you know what at the end of the day if it's at the end of the day if a game is as good as they are then it doesn't matter if it's rehashed um, because Nintendo just keep they keep putting out all these the same kind of game ideas but they do them that bloody well that as long as a game is enjoyable, then I don't have an issue with it. Um, now, part two, what are you saying here? Um, will new players such as your daughter be attracted to the gameplay and it doesn't matter how old some of these characters are? Well, yeah, I mean, to Ava, you know, all these games was new, you know. Um, she played a lot of them in the GameCube and that kind of stuff. She didn't know the SNES, obviously. So she's been playing Mario Kart for quite a while. She's been playing the various Super Mario Brothers games. Um, but again, when they're when they're made that good, then I don't really see an issue of it. I mean, I was making a, a comment about the Xbox. There are a million and one different games for the Xbox, but try and name anything other than Halo and you're struggling. But uh, when you talk about Nintendo, there's you know maybe half a dozen, maybe slightly more. Um, games that they make and they're, they're made that well that you know as a gamer I enjoy playing them so I certainly don't have a problem when they rehash them because they always they always really really they, they just improve them no end um, I don't think there's been any a bad game that Nintendo have brought out there's been a few things like uh, Mario Sunshine the sort of camera was slightly wonky um, and I think Mario Kart and N64 wasn't that great sort of thing but no, I'm a massive Nintendo fan and I'd certainly have a problem with them uh, rehashing the games because when they're that good then who cares so yeah, hopefully that answers your, your question Kev and very lastly guys just um, I need to say a massive thank you to Mark uh, Lacto Lactobacillus Prime I can never remember your full Sunday name Mark um, I gave uh, Mark, had this handheld thing, 
um, I sent it to Mark recently and he's done a, a sort of an unboxing video and also a video of it in action and he, he's given me a shout out and uh, absolutely w wicked I mean I think it was Tuesday Wednesday of this week and I think I've gained about uh, must have gained about 8 subscribers obviously on the back of Mark so you know it's a, a privilege to get a shout out on your channel Mark um, you're a popular channel excellent guy you make brilliant videos and to get a mention um, it's quite bizarre actually when you see your, your own video your own uh, YouTube channel and somebody else's channel so thank you very much to Mark and very lastly um, I wanted another shout out um, as I've mentioned before I'm a great I'm a fan of shout outs I always think that other channels could do more for people whether they're big small whatever you know we're all here to, to enjoy our hobby and the more channels that are out there offering quality stuff then it's good to be good now this one person um, I'd never even heard of. Um, turns out a lot of the other guys are aware of him. But again, I think it was it was down the rabbit hole, Kevin. Um, he mentioned him, and this chap goes by the name of uh, Swifto, Channel Swift. Now, Swifto is a fellow Scot. Um, he's a fair bit younger than me. And uh, I hope you don't mind me saying this, uh, Swifto. The first few videos I watched, they were pretty... Mm, um, some of them were pretty like uh, dark and I thought bloody hell why would anybody want to watch this but I've been watching more of your videos and I really 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 like your style you're, you're a natural dare I say you're a natural in front of the camera you've got your own distinctive way you, you talk um, I was in stitches at some of the videos that you've been making um, yeah you do tell it how it is um, you have been quite open about having a few problems in the past um, so I totally respect that and I'm one of these guys that tends to can be quite open with things as well but what you do, all I can say is uh, I know you've been going for a few years and going by some of your videos you seem to get a bit down in the dumps about lack of views, lack of subscribers and for the, the not, I don't know how long you've been going for, I think a couple of years you've not got a high subscriber level, Christ knows why because I think what you put out is absolutely fantastic so go, uh, do, do the guy a favour, go and check his channel out, the link is below, um, if you like what you see, subscribe to him, but he's awesome, you've got, you're, you're completely unique, you're different from anybody else, and you also do your own uh, sort of animation, which is just fantastic, in fact I was actually thinking of uh, asking you nicely to maybe do a wee, mon a wee uh, caricature of me or something that I could stick in my channel, so yeah, go and check out Swifto, fantastic site, I really enjoy it, it might not be every, everybody's cup of tea but then you know my channel isn't everyone's cup of tea but by all means do not give up what you're doing Swift though I think what you're what you're doing is perfect and I really really enjoy it so keep up the good work so anyway listen I'm kind of rushing here because my daughter is desperate to get in and play Splatoon of all games so I'm going to draw this to a close um, thank you very much for watching I hope you have a nice weekend um, <coughs> please feel free to like, comment and subscribe if there's any questions you want answered next week put them in the comments below if there's anything you want me to talk about at all then stick it below as well and uh, finally guys, thanks so much for watching thanks for watching my man master channel please feel free to like, comment or subscribe you can also follow me on facebook and twitter